So I've been seeing a lot of these videos talking about the gray man and what to wear, how to ensure that you're not looking too tactical for your environment and making sure that, you know, the gray man, that's the place to be and that's how you need to look and this is what a gray man is. And I find myself disagreeing with, disagreeing with almost everything I'm hearing. And that comes from a place of, you know, my own personal experience. But like anything else I do on this channel, I like to articulate my points using facts and reasoning. So when most people think about bugging out and going into the woods, this is where they think of a place like this. Now, it may look like I'm, you know, off grid, super out in the woods, which I kind of am. My closest town is a town of 2,200 people and it's that way and it's four miles away on a narrow road. Because I can tell you that, yeah, I'm wearing a 5'11 polo right now with a gray shirt underneath it. I can tell you that me wearing this with 5'11 pants is going to help me blend in a lot more in my big pickup that's red with this dog than you coming here in jeans, you know, a flannel shirt and your little Columbia Sportswear um, backpack walking around. I'm gonna look like I fit in a lot more than you are. Guaranteed that. So lately I've been seeing these gray man videos have been popping up and I'm starting to notice a trend. More and more of them are basically, for more or less, talking about how tactical's bad, tactical's not advantageous and all this stuff. And I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time and maybe somebody can explain it to me. I'm having a hard time understanding where this is coming from. And I'm not saying that, you know, tactical is good or bad necessarily, but I guess I'm confused by the definition. Um, because everybody, when they're talking about gray man, they're talking about you have to look a certain way, right? Gray man has a certain style to it. And I, I don't, I've never understood that. And this, I'm coming from a person of, you know, real life, tactical and, you know, logistical experience, okay? I've done executive protection for a very prominent um, politician that everybody knows, um, I was a sergeant on his, on his detail. And so I understand, or at least I, I thought I did understood what being a great man meant, um, fitting into your environment. I mean, I thought of, I understood that pretty well. I mean, I walked, I've walked in the middle, I've been in the middle of Antifa crowds, you know, dressed as a immigrant from Venezuela that was a vegan, like throw all those things together and I can do it just fine. No problem. And I've, I've done this in, in, in real life. And obviously he's still alive today. So obviously everything we did worked. So I plan, I've executed these types of uh, pushes, whatever you want to call it, missions, whatever, whatever hashtag word you want to call with planning a goal and effectively, you know, getting it done, getting the job done. So I've done that. I've done mock bug outs. Like I've done all these things in, in my life. Um, and then not even speaking to, that's just the executive protection side. That's not even talking about my military and first responder side. So I definitely understand, you know, what it is to fit into an environment. But this idea now that just gray man has a certain look or specificity to it um, makes absolutely no sense. And then this, this change of mindset that tactical is somehow bad. I just <clears throat> like the idea that tactical even has a look. Is, is confusing to me, okay? Because I know tactical as, as a definition that you can find in a dictionary. You know, the definition of, you know, it's an adjective that describes actions, right? Actions that are purposefully emulated and purposefully formed to give you a strategic advantage or for a strategic end, right? The very definition of what tactical is. And I don't understand how, how that's a bad thing, how an adjective that describes actions that give you a logistical advantage or a strategical advantage, no idea how that's a bad thing. So maybe somebody can help explain that to me. But I like the business law school quote. It's, it's an old business, uh, um, not law school, but it's old business school quote, right? And that is dress for the part just for the job that you want, not the job you have, right? And that, that comes from, you know, like I said, business, uh, Harvard, Harvard's business school. 
And so I think that's very true. And I think we're talking about Grayman and we're talking about this in the scenario that a lot of people always talk about Grayman, the bugging out scenario. I think it's very important that that's something we take into consideration because a lot of people, you know, it's the people from the cities that are going into the countryside. That's what we're going to be talking about, right? That's what's going to be happening. That's, that's the scenario that's going to play out. I being in a rustic small community like him, I'm not bugging out to the big city. I'm not. You guys are bugging out here. I'm not bugging out to you. And so I think it's important that if you're wanting to play a gray man, stop thinking about it from this is what a gray man looks like and look at the place that you're wanting to go and then take those take those features, those ab- attributes, the culture, take that all into play and then formulate the character that you're wishing to play, right? And not, And it's not just enough to actually understand the character that you're trying to play, but understand who they are as people as well. You know, if you're going to like what I've done, if you're going to dress like an immigrant from Venezuela, who's vegan, you better know a lot about Venezuela. You better know a lot about veganism and you better know about what ideals these, you know, Marxists, Antifa socialists are spewing. Cause if you're going to want to, if you're going to be walking through with them, for getting a tactical advantage, right? An advantageous strategical advantage to protect your principle, you're going to be able to have to play the part until it's time for you not to play the part, right? It's the same thing with being in these small town communities because I hate to break it to you. Um, for example, this is a picture of what Buffalo Prepper looks looks like when he's talking about the gray man, right? As you can see, He's wearing um, sunglasses. He's wearing a, uh, not polo, he's wearing a flannel, blue jeans, you know, and a gray hiking backpack. And I'm sure he's wearing hiking shoes of some kind. And, And he's talking about like, this is what you have to wear if you're wanting to bug out and go into the woods or whatever. I'm just not seeing that because if you pop out like that, you know, in my back, in my backyard, I'm going to know that you're not from around here. Something isn't right. That is way more, I mean, I'm more likely to see a guy who is popping in. If the guy guy like you popped out, I'd be much more concerned versus a guy who pops out that's wearing 5'11 pants, a grunt style shirt with eccentric coloring on the front and back of it, Y straps, wearing Romeos with a dip in and a Budweiser hat. I know why he's there. Hey, Bubba. You drunk? <laughs> what are you doing here? You know what I mean? Like that that's that matches the part. That matches the scene. That sounds like one of my neighbors. But you popping out, nah, something's not right here. Why are you here? Because I'm gonna know you're not from the community. I'm gonna know that you don't belong here, right? And if you didn't understand the references that I was mentioning about what he was wearing, you know, the Y straps, the Romeos. Also, that's part of the problem, right? So not only is it not enough to just look the part, you got to know the part, you know? If I call you a brush shape and you have no idea what I'm talking about, or a broom tail, you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, why are you dressed like logger, but you don't seem to understand my terminology? You see what I mean? And so understand the part that you're trying to play. So if you're really trying to be a gray man, realize that one size does not fit all. You should be able to know and articulate, you know, why you are wearing the things that you're wearing, because... The point that you lose me and the point where I'm constantly lost is when people talk about, they talk about being a gray man and then they specifically say, don't wear tactical stuff. I don't know what that means. I don't understand. And maybe you can, maybe you can describe it to me, but at the point where you are starting to take a priority precedence of cosmetic attributes versus ability, function, mobility and meritocracy you're you're losing me because all those should take priority how something functions should be a priority your ability in it should be a priority your mobility should be a priority the meritocracy of what it does for you should be a priority the cosmetic attributes that should be the lowest priority because you should be able to find something that does all the aforementioned and still fits into the environment in which you're wishing to operate in because I can tell you, I can dress like a immigrant Venezuelan vegan in a Black Lives Matter crowd or Antifa crowd or Marxist socialist crowd, and I can still have a tactical advantage. 
I can still wear things that are going to allow me to do the ultimate goal of protect the principle. I know. I've done it. I can do it. So when you're looking at this from a bugging out scenario and standpoint, it's very important that you know and play the part. Because as much as you guys think about, you know, or try to think about and plan for what you're going to wear and dress like and how you're going to fit in, I hate to break it to you. When you come to these small towns, they are going to see you and you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. You know why? Because if you go to any of these towns, go to the cafes in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. If you want to know what these people of your community look like and dress like and act, go to a local cafe in the morning when your farmers, your ranchers, your lumberjacks, your fishermen, your blue-collar linemen, your construction guys, you know, when they're out and about and they're hanging out and they're drinking coffee and they're talking about the news, listen to the things they talk about. Listen to how they act. Let's look at how they dress. Because you know what they're concerned about? The news? And you're always going to hear them talking about, about those darn city people that are moving into our small town communities and bringing that propaganda with you, you know, bringing that mentality that caused you to leave your cities in the first place. And if you live in a small town, you know what I'm talking about. That's what they talk about. Some people in small town communities, they're afraid of you. They're not because they're afraid of what you're going to do as far as hurting them. They're afraid of the garbage bullshit ideology that you have that's going to come down and make this place, the small town, the small town rustic town they live in, the same reason why you left in the first place. And yes, people in small towns, they're they are definitely afraid of that. They sure are. So it's important to know where it is you're going. Because if you plan to bug out someplace, your most important priority should be how they perceive you. And if you fit into that environment. Yes, I get it. If you're trying to bug out of Portland and you're afraid that, you know, a grunt style shirt is too eccentric, cool. Wear whatever. But just know... When you finally get to your destination, make sure you look and play the part. Make sure you know the part. Because like I said, it's not just enough to, to, to look the part. You got to know the part. Because I hate to break it to you. Nobody, I mean, we have some great hiking spots here. And we can tell everybody that comes to these hiking spots that are not from not, not from around here. I'm telling you. It, it, it's super, super easy to point out. Because the people that are, the local people that are hiking, they're not wearing these Fancy hiking shoes with their Columbia sportswear, hiking backpack, and a flannel, lumberjack flannel with blue jeans. They're just not wearing that. You know what I mean? They're wearing 5'11 pants, Carhartt pants. You know what I mean? They're wearing Y-strap or X-strap. Y-straps can be more comfortable. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should look into it. Y-straps, Budweiser hat, big old dip in, eccentric, like I said, grunt style or nine, nine line shirt, drinking a beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the vehicles they drive, lifted trucks, CB radios, American flags, Trump flags, first responder flags, you know, their favorite football team, you know, they might have a ball cap in the front, you know, Carhartt ball cap in the front, in the front, see their pickup, or if they were in the military and they're, you know, veterans, veteran decals, stickers, hats, the old timers all wear their veteran caps on. I mean, my county has one of the smallest populations in the state and has the highest per capita of veterans in it, you know? So know the location of where you're bugging out to and understand the culture that's there because there is not this one size fits all gray man look. It just doesn't exist. And in anybody that has served in exec knows executive protection, they'll, they'll tell you that, you know what I mean? Anybody that's, to how to do this professionally. I mean, these are just things that we take into consideration when we're doing any kind of push. So like I said, look at it from the reality of common sense. Like I said, you wearing your atypical YouTube gray man, this is what we wear. It's not going to cut it in all places. Be purposeful. Know exactly where it is you're going and know how to fit in. Because like I said, we're going to be able to tell. And people, especially small communities that are super established, I can literally dress like anything, really, and walk around in my community. And guess what? I'm not worried about it. You know why? Because people in small communities, we carry ourselves a certain way too. 
people may give me crap, but guess what? They give me crap because they know me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because small town, we know each other. We can tell our own from a distance. There's just the way we walk, the way we carry yourself, how comfortable we are with the people. We know that, oh, that person's from around here. Because like I said, it's such a small town community. We know all our neighbors miles down. We know them. So I don't know where it is you're trying to bug out to, but the reality of the situation is people from big cities are going to bug out and go to the countryside. Know the countryside you're going to. If you liked the video, let me know. If you totally disagreed with everything I said, like I say in all my videos, please use your words, articulate why, articulate why you disagree with me, and let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation about it. Well, I hope you guys liked the video, and as always, long live the Republic.